פרשס אמוייר, תשפ"ג. This is a packed parasha. And um, the truth is still today, I didn't know. I, be, I started uh, preparing at the beginning of the parasha, very interesting about the more, you know, very musadik, a uh, lot to take. And I figured, you know, we have the Oimer, we're doing the Oimer. It's a very, very important mitzvah. At the Kabbalah, it's... Um, it's huge, huge. And I decided maybe it's good I to explain a little bit about what we are doing, what we're trying to achieve. What he means discounting the days, what are we trying to do? I mean, okay, in the time of Beis Amikdash, they had to, to bring the Oimer, which is a small amount of flour from um, Seoirim. All right, someone helps me. Seorim in English. Chitim is wheat. Seorim is... Um, hey. Huh? Barley. Barley, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we put into the chant. So we have the barley. We don't take the best thing. We're taking barley and we bring it to the Beis Amigdash. You know, we know the Indian of Corbin. It's big every time. Mincha is a carbon. But us, what are we doing? We are counting the days. We are counting every night. And we have to count the days and the weeks. And we can't miss it. It's a big machloikis in halacha if you missed. Uh, if you should count or not. La halacha, you know, it's accepted that someone who missed the day, since it's a suffix bracha, because there's a machlekes vishoyinim, then he doesn't have to make a bracha. al Kabbalah, he makes a bracha another day. It's a different mitzvah. Every time it's a, if you look on the little words, next to the days, you see a different midah. Like, like yesterday was Yesoit Shebenetzach. Today is going to be Malchus Shebenetzach. And tomorrow is going to be um and um, Gvura and we go through the seven, the seven midos, the seven spheres, seven times. So we're gonna try to give it some sense and explaining what's the mitzvah behind all this. Let's go to the psukim, because everything has to be in the words, otherwise, it's fluff. All right, did I paint enough the pasuk, or should I keep the last words? I just, I just it was tired. I said, I can't talk about all this. Daber b'nei Yisrael, ve'omata aleihem, daber ve'omata, you know. We spoke about this once, uh, not now. We have more important things to do. Ki savoyu el ha'aretz, when you come to the land. You know, obviously, you're not going to steal the Oymer right now. It has to come from you. So it's not in the Midbar. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells them the mitzvah in the Midbar. Asher ani noisen lachem. Every time you see this in the Torah, there's something to teach you. How many times HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to tell us that it's the land that he's giving to us? Whenever you see that, you need to know that the Torah doesn't repeat words thinking we're not understanding or no, we're not quick of mind. It's because there's a limud right in this Pasuk. And we will see that the lotion of the Pasuk is, makes no sense grammatically. Okay, so you're in the land in Eretz Yisrael, the HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us. Uktsatem esketzira. You will cut the cuttings. Uh-huh. Interesting language. 
Uktsatem Oimer. Save me thing. Vavesem es Oimer. And you'll bring the Oimer. Which Oimer? Reshis Ketzirechem. But you just told me Uktsatem es Ketziro. What it means Reshis Ketzirechem again? You have to bring it Ela Koyen. But child, the Koyen has a whole pro procedure here. Veheini Fesa Oimer. And he will not shake. He will um, swirl the oimer, going side to side, up and down. Like the cross, to tell you the cross was not invented by those guys. It was the Tnufa in the Beis Amigdash was always in the shape of the cross. So the Veheini Fesa Oimer, Lifnei Hashem. Whoa, where is the Kohen? You told me to bring it to the Kohen, the Kohen in the Besamikdash. And now again, the Enif es Ha'oimer, not, not Ha'oimer. What are you trying to include me here? Lifne Yashem, like it, I had an idea to do it in Yerushalayim, in the city, right? That's where the Kohen does the Tnufa of any carbon. It's a Mincha. We bring it to the Besamikdash. It has to be burnt on the Mizbech. So what are we trying to, to say? Not on the Mizbech. Yeah, it is in a special way. Ah, oh, now if I'm willing. It's not, it's not uh, mandatory. But if you're willing. Okay. Mimacharasa Shabbos. The day after Shabbos. You mean Sunday? No. It means after the first day of Pesach. So tell me, Tezayin Nisan. You called common Pesach for you, Dalit. You called Pesach for, for Tesvav. Tell me, Bachamisha Sariam Lachoidesh, Pesach Lashem. And, and tell me, Beshisha uh, Salachoidesh, bring the Oimer. And then, you know, clear me up all this psukim. And now here we go again. Vasisem, and you will do. Beyoim Hanifchem Es Oimer. Here we go again. The day you, 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 uh, anyone has a word for uh, Tnufa just tells me. Um, wave. What? You wave it. To rave it? R A V E? Wave. W A V E. W A V E. Oh, wave it. Yeah, to wave it. Uh, yeah, a good word. To wave it. So, um, so, uh, and we go, S Ha Oimer. And then you bring the Corbin. Then the Pasuk tells us, okay, what do you have to do? Usfatem lachem. You count for yourself. You know, the word lachem usually comes for a mitzvah where ulkachtem lachem, like for the lula, for the esroig, it has to be yours. The sphera has to be mine. Let's say I want to hear the bracha for someone else and I say, amen, am I yoitze? Yes, for sure, I'm yoitze. And I can even say the bracha the next day myself. So what is Lachem here? Again, we said Mi Shabbos, the same language. You can see the, the Pasuk is draining us a message here. A very, very strong message. <laughs> There's a Ramban in 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 um in the beginning of in the Hakdam of uh, Sefer Bereshis, he says. Sometimes the Pasuk shows you that he, he has a hinted message and the way to go after it is through Gematrius. The Ramban says clearly that, that that's the way the, to learn uh, this Pesukim. So here we see Ad Shabbos until the seventh Shabbos Tisperu You need to count 50 days. Seven times seven equals what? 50? 49. So why do you say 50 here? Now, if I'm looking in Pasha's Devarim, in Pasha's race, it's Shiva Sav Shavuos Tispolach. Seven weeks you need to count, but it doesn't say 50 days. So what are those 50 days? And then they craft them, you will bring to the Beis Amikdash, Mincha Chadasha, a new Mincha. 
No, I'm going to bring the Shte Alechem, the Soilis. So, so the Mincha of Soilis, Mincha Soilis. What do you call it, Mincha Chadasha? Rashi says <coughs> the reason of the waving, Rashi is not, didn't comment a lot on these uh, things. So, so what is the purpose of the waving? Since we are talking about the Tavua, and in order to prevent the bad winds and the bad rains to, to damage it, the waving would do it for the, on the Oymer. Let me scratch my head. We bring a mincha. This mincha, I can pass the parishes, mincha's bikurim, uh, we're talking about the Oymer there. We're bringing a bikurim of the Tvua, basically. So we know what we have to do. No, it tells us here secrets. You bring the Oymer, the wave, the purpose of the waving of the Oymer is being revealed to stop Ruchois Royce. It could, it could be translated bad spirits, but Rashi seems to say the bad winds. Utlalim Royim. And bad do's to be exact, if I wanted to translate. Oh, you, you've seen the do you is uh well came down on us, flooded us the do. It's a very interesting shot. We see here we are loaded with um a message, a secret on the Oymer that obviously, even from the shot in the Pasuk, the Pasuk screams. There's no pshat here. Please, step out. Go deeper. And you will see what I'm telling you here. Let's start this year. In other words, just to summarize it. All the Torah wanted to order us was two things. To bring flour from uh, barley, barley flour that had to be siphoned 13 times in order to be very clean. You really want such a good flour, get, get wheats. Why did you get, why did you get barley? Barley is the food of an animal. Donkeys eat barley uh, cows eat barley, you men eat wheat. For the Mizbeach, you want to bring barley? That's the Oimer? The second mitzvah we have here is to count 50 days, which are really only 49. That's a summary of the mitzvahs. In between, there are a lot of mitzvahs, Loisa say, that you cannot eat before, you cannot eat chadash, there's a lot of mitzvahs in this Oymer, like to pact. It seems to be like so essential, so fundamental, that we need to, to, to address what is the story that we don't see here. Moshe Rabbeinu, in his learning with the Shin Yochai in the Zayar, when Moshe Rabbeinu learns the Zayar with the Shin Yochai, he is named Raya Mehemna. Roe Hanehman, the trust, the trusted shepherd. Where Rabbi Shin Yochai is called the Butsina Kadisha, the, the Ner HaKadosh, the whatever, you understood so he in Raya Mehemna, so the Zoya does specific sections, you know, when Moshe Rabbeinu speaks. Sometimes it's in Yawa Navi, but here, and he wants to give a pshat that uh, and I'm going to give you more than just what he says because the Zoya brings down a little bit more onto it and I don't want to jump from Zoya to Zoya, I'm going to lose you. But and I'm gonna bring and I'm gonna explain it according to the Ramaz. What's the meaning here of that Zoya? Rav Moshe Zakut, 
for those who don't know the Ramaz. Ramaz is, every time he writes, it's, it's a Kiddush. Um, so, when Bnei Yisrael came out of Egypt, the, the, the Mitzrayim had to push them out. They couldn't go out of Egypt. They were blocked by the, the, the sorcery of Pharaoh. They had to overpass, to jump over. The witchcraft and everything. To that purpose, HaKadosh Baruch Hu asked them to do the mitzvah of Dam Mila and Dam Pesach. In order to show that they removed themselves from the Ola, which is the food of the Nachash. There's a whole Torah about this. We, the Moel has to take a cup, there's a little bit of dirt, you have to give it inside, so the Nachash has his share. We're not going into this. I think we spoke about the Parsha Stazria. Um, oh no, that was right after Pesach? I, I don't remember. Anyway, so they had the schus. So they removed themselves from the tumor. However, they had not yet stepped in the ladder of the Gdusha. Explain the Ramaz HaKadosh. Tremendous book. It says in the Torah, Actually, it's the on the line. The Chida brings it down in the Chomas um, Anach. Um, how did the Bnei Israel do Korban Pesach in Mitzrayim? The Torah says, if you do Korban Pesach outside the Beis Amikdash, when Yichresa Hanefeshai, and it doesn't say anywhere in the Psukim that. That cause, so yes, the Korban Pesach of Mitzrayim was different than any other Korban Pesach. This there were special rules. Though it doesn't say that one of the rules that were permitted was to do it outside the Besamikdash. Says the Ramaz. Here, our Zoya Moshira Benu, his Kavana is to this Targum Yoinasan that answers that question. It says in the Pasuk, in Pasha Sisroi, Va Esa Eschem Al Kanfei Neshari. And I picked you up on the wings of um, eagle wings. Says the Targum Yoinasan, Akadosh Borchu, at the time of Kobun Pesach, sent the Anani Kavid, he loaded in the Bnei Israel, flew them into Haramoria to do the Kobun Pesach. The Kobun Pesach of the Bnei Israel, they had disappeared already once from its rhyme. Through the Anani COVID, they went to Har Moria and they did the Kavan Pesach, and afterward they came back. They came back. I don't want to do all on this because I love that uh, Targum Yoin Hassan. There's so much said about it. Uh, it it's magnificent, the, this Torah. And, and this proves in the Psukim, in the Lashon of Psukim, this. So this Chus came with the Mila. However, they didn't have a schus to go higher into the ladder of the Gdusha. That Moshe Rabbeinu's pshat is a little bit difficult. You want to tell me, the Bnei Yisrael Azoyche to go into the Anane Kaved, right? The Anane Kaved is a Shechina Gdusha. Did any one of you had ever a trip on the Anane Kaved? Nah, me neither. So, so uh, you can see the level they had to be in order to be able to enter inside the Shechina and be zoichet to be flown in all the way to Eretz Yisrael on Haramoria. But not, they don't deserve to go up the ladder. 
which ladder? I don't know what he's talking about. You know, for me, if you reach the Shekhinah, Ze'asha al Hashem, Tzadikim Yavu'uvoy, this is the gate to heaven, to the other middle, so you go inside. Explains Moshe Rabbeinu, the intention here of the Psukim is to tell us, as a woman that had menstruation, and needs to wait seven days in order to become Tahir. Bnei Israel were lacking this Tyra, this Gdusha, and therefore could not be one with Akadosh Baruch Hu, and had to purify themselves seven weeks. Okay. I can understand as a puzzle that talks about the need uh, that needs to, to purify herself seven days. But I don't know any pasuk or any din in the Torah that requires seven times seven. So if you want to compare it to a nida, compare it all the way. There are seven midas, you know, chesed, gvura, tiferes, netzach, hoid, yesoid, malchus, seven. Against those seven, the Nida does seven days. Every day she removes one part of the tumor until she can go into the mikveh and become totally tired. We should have done the same thing. Go seven days, you know, a little chaylamoyed on Pesach, and then... Uh, because all the Rishonim are saying that these 50 days that we have between Pesach and, 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 and Shavuos, it's Cholam I don't have enough headaches I'm trying to explain something simple. Why was the purpose of this 7 times 7? Now you want to tell me that you have to know, right? Like in Sukkot, there's Cholam between the, the Chag of Sukkot and Atzeres, which is Shmini Atzeres, also in Pesach you have the same thing, but it's a little bit longer. You have Pesach, and now you have Choyla Moed, like on Sukkot, and then you have Atzeres, also Shu is called Atzeres, the 50th day. So those 49 days are Choyla Moed. I love it. But it still doesn't explain why 49. Why not seven? The Zoya just compared it to Anita. Just seven. And at the end of the day, I love all this. But I have a specific rule, a fundamental rule. The Torah never speaks about something if it's not going to transcend the times and the people and talk to you directly. Okay, I today do not understand how this mitzvah enhances anything or removes anything in my life. I do not understand. I don't see it. I don't see the first gate. I see a ninth shot. I see the Moshe Rabbeinu coming here explaining the Psokim in something. Okay, I can hop. I see the Rosh coming. The Rokeach says even more than this. The Rokeach HaKadosh, Rabbi Yezah Migamizia, says that there is a way of counting the 49 days as we count them with Sphira Sa'imer. And the 50th day is counted in a different way in the Tefillah of Musa. Whoa. So, so indeed, I am counting 50 days. And he's not alone saying this. Tanaim, Teres Kayanim. To the point it's mind-bogging that, that, that the other Rishonim don't say that because it's written in Teres Kayanim. I think I'm going to stop bringing Pshatim on this because uh, we're going to get lost. But I just want to make it so obvious that 
for millennials, Chazal had a problem with the language of the Psukim here. Once this happens, and you can get anchored because you start swerving so much and you don't find the, the path in order to, to come up to, to land. Basically, the pilot is gone. That plane is crazy. You need to land it. You're up in the air. Take it as a rule of thumb. Always go back to the Sefer HaMitzvahs. This will land you down calmly without anything. So once we've been swerving all over, let's start from Halach. The Sefer it was a Rishon. Sefer HaMitzvah says, HaKadosh Baruch told Meshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to give you uh, ois, that when you're going to come out of Mitzrayim, you will worship HaKadosh Baruch Hu on this very mountain where we are talking now, where there was a snake, where there was a bush burning. Here you're going to be working HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You're going to be worshiping HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Meaning there you're going to receive the Torah. So says the Sefer HaChinuch, since the Torah is above Anything natural, it doesn't belong in this world. So we're getting a present coming from the world above. Therefore, we have to show our anguish, our excitement to come and get it. Go and get it, you know? So today we say with the 23rd day, the 24th day, the 25th day, the 26th day, and that, and that, and this, and this. Why? All these for Kabbalah Satir. My only problem is, it's called the countdown, not the, the count up. If you, if, if you really want to explain it that way, and you say, you know, a kid that has his vacation or the summer vacation, they start crossing the days, right? And then you know how many days left. No, how many days since. How many days left. However, we're getting here already an idea that on one hand, so we comprise, so at least now we have borders. We have on one hand Yetias Mitzrayim, on the other hand, Kabbalah Satoira and something in the middle that we cannot define. However, the Sefer HaChinuch brought me another point. The Gemara says in Yuma that, do you know why there was a tongue of land coming out of the, the portion of Binyamin and going into the portion of Yehuda? And in that portion, interestingly, part of the Besamikdash is included there. In other words, the Besamikdash was divided between Chelek of Binyamin and Chelek of Yehuda. Because every day Binyamin at Sadiq, Binyamin the son of Yaakov Avinu was Misave. He was like seeking that HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts his spirit on his land. And he was Zoyche that the Kodesh HaKodeshim is on the portion of Binyamin. The rest of the, rest of the Besamikdash, the Heichal, the Kodesh, and the, the, all the rest in Hamoria is on the Chelek of Yehuda. In other words, yes, when I'm breaking down what the Sefer HaChinuch said, I do understand I do have a little bit of more markers. Now I just got three out of his words. One, Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Second, the Torah on the other side. In the middle, in order to deserve, because we're going to jump world. And we're going to meet, we're going to understand what he means very soon and what he does for me and what's the whole meaning. 
it's like a runner, you know, taking his, uh, he has to take a few, uh, few steps before he jumps to create energy to be able to, to lift up his body. He also, we're going to create something, I don't know what, but we're going to create something that will enable us to get to the Torah there. How, what, we'll see. But in the meantime, one fundamental thing that the Sefer HaChinuch teaches me is fundamental in a person's life. If I said the Shia to teach you that word, it's enough. Historicus, it's um, the, the 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 correct word in English would be not seeking. It's not to look forward, not to expect. Uh, if someone has a good word. Someone can look at a, a good translation on a Google Translate or whatever. Please do so and tell me the the right word. So histoikikus is to be mistoikik, to be expecting but deeply wanting. Equals one seventeen, thirteen thirteen seventeen. Are you ready? What is the Merkava, the chariot of the Shekhinah composed of? You know that there are four from, from the, the Nevuah of Yecheskel, there are four faces. The first face is Adam. The second is Arya, the lion. The third one is Nesher, the eagle. The first one is the shur, the bull. A person who is seeking will always get. This is an assurance. This is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu, one of the rules of this world. Don't be crazy, but dream. Yes, you have to have in your mind, we, we said this, Beshem, I don't know how, who uh, uh, at that point um, it was the family of Daria Kodesh. He was the we said it by the Emek Emek Amelech and uh, the Rish is Chokma. But the Baal Shem says the word a little bit differently. Every, every all the Gdoinim have said that word that word. Once you have your machshava going, so remember, you want to be seeking. It's in your heart. You, you put a direction. It goes to your das. Now, in your mind, you look up where you want to be. You look up, this is where I need, I will, really want to reach. Not, oh, that would be great, so people will respect me and people. No, that's not the, the right way to seek. You will not reach it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not going to lend a hand to someone who wants to be Bar Kovid or Bar Gaiva. That's not, that's, that's not how it works. But if you're truly seeking something and you need it and you want it, the Shekhinah will bring it to you. You won't even have to go out. The Shekhinah will bring it to you. This is the chariot of the Shekhinah. This is the Merkava Hakdoisha comes when a person is truly seeking. Binyamin was not supposed to have the Kodesh HaKadoshim. The, 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 that was part of the Chelek of Yehuda. However, HaKadosh Baruch Hu changed the Chelek of Yehuda because of the Hishtoikikus 
of Binyamin. And he didn't get, he would have had the Chatzar, you know, part of great, you know, the Chatzar of the Beis Amigdash is already great. No, he got the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Don't hold back in this. There's a big difference between demyoinus, meaning having uh, completely crazy dreams of uh, whatever, and having something which is anchored and 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 makes sense. Someone wants to be able to understand Torah more for himself, and and for the sake of Torah and for the sake of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Someone needs truly panasa coming easy, not to do a avoida. He wants to do a melacha only. Because avoida translates into you having the wrong mental about approaching the, the, the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives thing in this world. It has to be a melacha. Melacha means light work. The avoida is when you are in shul. When we serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's called the avoida. When we work for our livinghood, it's called a melacha. And once you are mishtoikek, once you have you seeking and you truly want this at that point, the Shechina Akdoisha will come and hand it over to you. Even if in the palm of your hand it's not written, even if on your forehead it's not written, it will change. Ishtoikikus is the power of a person to change even things that have been Nixar and Shamai. Now, how do you do this? Now we're starting entering an area that becoming really interesting to me because a lot of us have a lot of things that we want and we have to select what we want versus what we, you know, we want to treat ourselves with. That's, that, that's not the right way to... Um, The Rekanati, who was um, also a Rishon, says, you know what? The whole union of bringing this Oymer was to stop the Din. Let's take a moment understanding his words. He is when, 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 when in 1600, early, late 1500, all the Pirushim call him Hamekubal Hagadir. He was a tremendous, he was not like a Yeliezer Megarmizia, almost at the same time. He was at the same time. So, so the Rekanati says, and I can't understand that. Because in Mitzrayim, they really didn't have, HaKadosh Bochum who made a tremendous chesed, they didn't go out of Mitzrayim because they deserved. They went out of Mitzrayim because HaKadosh Baruch Hu decided so. At the level of the Seder, when we start, because if you analyze, we're going to go just a second, a little bit deeper, but I'm going to take you by the hand. Each one will understand. At the night of the Seder, we were in the Bina, in the world of freedom. World of freedom means we got out of Egypt. No one can against us. The Shechina is the mother. What we say in Halal, Aim Habanim Semecha. In um, uh, the second one, Betzeis Yisrael mi Mitzrayim, Bez Yaakoyim Amloiz, Hoisa Yehuda. Aim Habanim Semecha Haraduka. Aim Habanim, the mother of the boys, of the children, is the Bina. Nobody can, all sorceries, because what is sorceries? It bad, it's evil spirits that enforce certain things that uh, the sorcerer wanted them to do, and they do it. But once the Bina shows her wing to cover the Malchus and the Bnei Israel, at that point is Mayday, Mayday, Mayday for the Clippers. Anyone who's not running fast enough to the deeper hole in whatever they can find, deeper of the depth, 
which is they, they run to the seventh Madura of the Gehinam. The seventh level of the Gehinam, that's the only way. If they can reach there, they're protected. If they didn't reach there, they're burnt by the Gdusha of the Bina. So there was no more sorcery. At that point, they walked out. But the next day, if you look, the next morning, the next night, I mean, uh, we start counting. So we're going down, 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 all the way to the Marcus. From the top, we were on Pesach. We start going down. So we were in the middle of Chesed. Let me show you on the tree of the mezuzahs, you will understand very simply the was something totally logical. Okay, this is where we are in Pesach, in Yom Kippur, you know, we are here. And this is Olam Haba Elyon, the upper Olam Haba. This is called the Yoivel because the 50th year is also freedom. There's nothing we had to, to send away, the Avadim, the slaves. So the Bina has a power to, to, to breach any barrier. Any barrier there is. Mitzrayim, Mitzari means barriers, frontiers. The Bina brings down all the frontiers. However, the next night we are here for one week. Then we're going down. We are here for one week. Then we are here for the third week. Like this week, we're here. We're finishing this week here. Now we're going lower. We're going to Hoyt. Then we're going in Yesod. Then we're going in Malchus. Then we're going Shavuos. Boom, back up here. What's going on? What's going on? The answer is, HaKadosh Bochu raised us there as a chesed, as I mentioned. But right away, the Midas Sadin came out of his nasty hole all the time. The Satan, the, 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 the female of the Satan, the wife of the Satan, Eshes Zenunim, the Risha, the Shifcha. Oh, I can give you all her names uh, in one shot. She comes and says, Akadosh Baruch you just... They don't deserve this. They don't have any merit. So why do you do, how can you give them for free? And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is that sort of, I mean, power law. Act, he put rules of justice in this world, and he himself has to act with justice. So says the Rekanati, Uktsatem esketsira, you will cut the cut, mean you will cut the Midas Adin. I love the idea. I can explain it. I cannot explain it in the words. That's the, the, the. And he says, the waving, the waving is in order, as we say in Retze, in Shemayin Esrei, the waving is to make it acceptable. The worship of Bnei Israel. I mean, obviously his words are loaded. Let's go dig into the passage. So we know now here, we have somewhere the snake. I always call her the snake. The, the Nachash, which is the Midasadin. She brings it. And they want to carry out havoc on the Bnei Israel. So said, we had a problem. Uksadem es Ketzira, we're going to repeat it. Uh, we're going to see after that the Beheinif, Beheimanifchem, uh, all this. But here we say the Midas Adin. Fine. We're going to try to find it out. The, the Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah says 
at four times in the year, there is a judgment. The first one is on Pesach, on the Tavur, on the harvest. Okay. So we know Pesach is the Tavur. And obviously, the Oimer, Reshis Ketzirechem, the first harvest, my Bikurim of Tvur, you have the Bikurim of the tree, the Bikurim of Tvur have to go to Hashem, so Hashem has a sinner I can send his bracha. Fine. I'm going to just... Uh... This equals to 440, Tvur. What do we see behind it? We see three clippers. And the three clippers of anger, which we know we very high into the hierarchy. These are generals. We have Tetzef. You know what? I don't even want to say them. You can read them. They're right under that female there. So here they come out and they want to destroy the Tvua. Nobody's perfect. Everybody does Khatan. And 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 at the moment of the harvest, says no, don't give them the panasa. Now, what I'm gonna say from now on applies to each one every day. Each one every day, Akadosh Baruch Hu is sending you your panasa beshefa. Panasa to be wealthy. It's not coming out. It's clogged. The conduit is clogged. So with the pressure, it makes a hole somewhere else. It goes, to, it goes somewhere else. Why? Because of the Midesadin. If Panasa, which is a promise from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is not down here every day as we need it, there is a problem because these guys are around. And I'm going to prove you beyond any doubt and how to, 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 to destroy them. We have to be able to tap in the R and such. Oh, it happens to be that the Bina is getting from the Keser, the or so it passes through the Bina. Uh -huh. So I need to be able to tap in there and I don't even have to fight them because as the Bina is coming to my help, automatically no, no Kitro can stay, no Dean can stay. It's So it's an, you annihilate them without even a fight because you brought down the the infantry and and, and they don't want to have uh... and and now look the proof we had we had a problem on this look how it fits exactly so not from the Mishnah this equals to 1642. Equals Shefa Bracha Vehat That's all we want, and that's all we demand, and that's exactly what comes when you cancel the din. So the conduit works. We have Shefa, Shefa of what from the bear, Banechayemezoine, a bracha to be even more, and Hatzlacha to be successful on our endeavors. You know, every time I want to undertake something, 
that you shouldn't get uh sorry i don't have it there. okay so we need shefa bracha and hatzlacha that's why we starting the oimer in order to prevent the kitru because every time we do something we coming to something new right away the hardship is there waiting at the gate i'm going to start a business and now it took me years to understand this how things are working i'm going to start a new business i'm going to go to a new venture before i start you got to stop you know hardship is there waiting for you at the door do not step over them do not enter first go to oil and soil need to find a way to bring the bina with you through that door then they're not there the mistake on every failure is because the bina was not there this is what the terror is teaching me here you do a new venture you're trying something you need if you're alone, we are not perfect. So the dean starts. And then, and these are the nasty ones. These are the, the generals. The anger. So they, they have no mercy. So you're going to tell me, how do we bring it down? Okay. What can I do? Look how high I have to go in order to go get it. That's going to be mind-blowing. And I wonder if to put you, for those who record this, okay. the Keser of you, the, the, the first name in the Chochmah, of you, the Yud Kevavke. The keser of the keye, which is in the uh, in the um, in the bina, and then you have to count. Whoa! Where does he do my counting? I understand. I have to do an action. I would love to do an action to do something good and go elevate myself. But I have to count too. Yeah, the counting is very important. That's why the Torah tells you on one hand here you do the oimer. The Oymer will do the Keser, this, but this was Fatem Lachem, you do to the sphere. Look how amazingly Meduya is the Torah. And will give us exactly the path we need to reach. The Rekanati has a few words. And he says, when we bring the Oimer, we're preparing the Kala. Let me explain this notion of Kala that we call the, the Malchus, we call her Kala, like in the morning. Why is the davening so important? Uh, especially by Musaf of, of Shuas in the morning after the whole night, because we prepared the Kala, and this is the time of the Chupa. Kala means completed, meaning the Shefa from all the other Midas came into the Kala. Now she is prepared, beautified, and she can go to meet Akadosh Baruch Hu under the Chupa. And this is also a mark when the Malchus can walk like this with her cloth, the beautiful cloth of, of, of royalty, means she is not scared of the thieves, of the, of the Midasadin, of the Satan, of anything. She is tranquil and she knows she is not in harm's way. Why is it? Because with counting with the Oimer, we have been able to, to um, cancel out and frighten 
all the powers of the Midah Sadin exactly as they've done it in Mitzrayim. The same way. We talked about it last week, and I'm going to prove you again this week. But this one on the... You remember the another of our view that brought the Esh Zara? And we said Esh Zara is Midah Sadin, and we brought the Zoya to say it's the... The infantry from the other side, the lily. Look at this. Hassan Kala equals 513. Equals Midas Adin. These are the words of, of, of the Rekanati. It just hints you this, and you know, just adds up the world. He, he says, Ki behis chaber chasan ve kala bracha ve shefa ba. When the Chassan and Kala get together, automatically, what we said before, the Shefa, Bracha, Vatzlacha is coming. His words. So put them together. Find a thing. Chassan, Kala. How? Because Chassan, Kala equals Esh, Zara also. Midasadin. Interesting. He says then that with the counting, we're getting the bracha and shefa. Shefa, bracha. But here he doesn't want to say shefa, bracha could mean you have a shefa of bracha. However, bracha and shefa is two different things. Here I'm going to step in. Probably I'm going to give you a, a little, a very quick introduction to this. We say shir shal yoim. Every day. That's the feeling no one understands. However, your panasa of the day is Shishal Yom. Shishal Yom is the, the faucet of the, of the pipe. And, and basically, you're going to open it or you're going to close it. Now you did a great downing. When it comes to Shishal Yom, you don't understand what it is. But the 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 now I'm telling you what is it? It's called the Shiva Shemois de Margeloin. It's the seven names, the maddest thing, of the pearl. The pearl being the Bina. So the Bina will be everywhere in your life. Every day, I told you where to find it. We have to stop the Midas Sadin. Here it is. In the Shir Shal Yoim. You know, it's not for that Shir to explain you how it works, but it's a very simple thing. It's brought down in, in, in the in the Raya Mehemna in, in, in Pasha's history. It's brought down in Shah Kavanis on Shir Shel Yoim in, in, in Pesad, uh, I think it's uh Drush Yud Aleph. I think so. Um it's two names. Which basically are seven letters, and they, they're gonna compose seven names. This is your week. This is the conduit. You already see Sukis here, you know, as for those who remember a little bit of the Kavanas of the Lula. But th this is where we are. I don't want to go deep on this. I just wanted to tell you that. And I'll tell you why I said that after that. So I just want to point out that this is the pipe. And your Shishel Yoim will be the, the faucet. Now, Hashem is sending water down that pipe. Mayim. Mayim that can be read on both ends. Mayim is a composition of two words. Mi and Yam. Mi is the Bina. Yam is the Malchus. But when you put them together, we only put one Yud because it's used for, bo uh, for both of them. And meaning the Bina is sending... The Bina is Eloikim Chaim. Every time you see in Davning Eloikim Chaim, we're pointing to the Bina. So, so the Loikim Chaim, which all the goodness comes from, 
It's non stop in Yom Kippur, right? In Asesi Mitchuba. That's the Bina. So we have these, so we have the conduits. So every day it's a different composition of the names. I'm not going to tell you how to get into it. And we have, and they come from the Margalis, how we call the Shechina, because she is the pearl. Now, if I'm taking Margalis, it's 683. 683 equals bracha veshefa, exactly the words of the Rekanati. I didn't have to look far for this, uh, for this Gematrius. I was sure, you know, right in the words, he was hiding behind Gematrius, and he used words like this. So now you know for sure. I got to mix up the Bina, right? I don't care about what I said before. We need to blast away all these walls, these barriers, these cages, whatever you want to call them from us. The only way is through the Bina. I need to be able to call upon the Bina. When I do the Sphira on the whole year, I brought the Bina on me. I'm attaching myself to the Bina. I deserve, I have the schus to say the Leshem Yechud before, before the Sphere of Sa'imer. I said after that, uh, not the Yerot sign, whatever. After that, so I have machshava about what I want to do with my with my Sphere of Sa'imer. And, and, and the last point I just didn't explain is the, the, the waving. So if you take the Hanif that we had on the Omer, what do we do? This equals to 151. I'm again in the B. Now, the, if you take Hey like this, Aleph, Hey, Yud, Hey, sorry, wrong one. Hey, like this. It's, it's the name called Kana, the 151. And this equals Mikveh. I get purified. Why? Because the, the Kitrogim left. I attached myself to the Bina. So there's, there is a, two ways to come back to Akadosh Bo. There is a way where, you know, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay, they did the mitzvah of Mila. They did this mitzvah. But they still didn't get close to Hashem. So meaning that, okay, you did that mitzvah, fine, it's on credit, but you have the debit. Now, you don't want to have to pay your debit. You have so many mortgages, you don't want to have to pay. So there is a way. Get close to Hashem. Where? To the Bina. And automatically, this will cancel all the debits columns. Why? Because it's going to be metaher. It's a mikveh. Mikveh Hashem, uh, Mikveh Yisrael Hashem. That's the Mikveh of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Mikveh HaElyon. I don't need to go back into Hashem in the last and I just want to finish on the 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 The, that very point so we understand and we stay at the same time we understood the Oymer, at the same time we understand the the ha, ha, in any other situation what do we learn from the Oymer to the other situation in order to get out of uh, so if you take here I'm almost down here the Haini Pesa um this equals to 867. You know that puzzle. Uh, you say it every day three times. Chanun verachum. Hashem yudke vavke. Erech apayim. Ugdol chaser. That's the whole puzzle. We don't realize in that pasuk, we're attaching ourselves to the Yud Gimel Midas Derachim, Chanun Verachum, Erech Apayim, and Dol Chasid is Noitzer Ches. We're attaching ourselves 
The waving of the Oimer, what Rashi said, is to remove the bad winds. No, now I'm going to attach spirits. And Klalim is a different type of spirits. So now I'm not translating any more things because yes, it is spirits. Why are they going away? Because the person is attaching himself to the Yud Gimel Midas Derachmim. Where do the Yud Gimel Midas Derachmim come? This Arichan pin on top, the Keser, to the Bina. Again, my Bina. For goodness sake, we need to attach ourselves to the Bina at any cost. Why? Because I'm going to show you and I'm going to finish on this. And this is mind blow wind. Spheras Haimer. Okay? That's what we're doing every night. Equals 1071. Equal Knesset Yisrael. Where do we do that? To free the Knesset Israel from all the dinim. Oh, I'm sorry. Equals Yerushalayim Shalmala. What are we doing? We're connecting ourselves to Yerushalayim Shalmala. Where is it? In the Bina. How do we do it? Exactly as we said last week, the same share, pay and lotion. Once we use the pay, which is the Malchus, sorry, two weeks ago, uh, and the lotion, which is the Yesoi, and bring them together for the good, automatically we transpose into the Bina. Now, again, let's summarize. How do I get into the Bina? We saw here, Utsatem Esketzir, we must have it. We want this to go, we have to get the Or and Soif. I have to be mevatal the midas adin, where, and I have to become tired with the mikveh, which is the bina, my shir shel And now in this period, the shir shel What does he do? Because Hakadosh Baruch Hu always sends shefa. Now you know when you say that pasuk, have a little thought about being attached to the Yud Gimel Midas Derachmim. Because what we said at the beginning of the Shir, Hishtoikikus, where is that? I wrote it somewhere. Okay. That, oh, here it is. That you, you have to be willing and the, and, the, and the Shekhinah will bring it to you. The Merkaba of the Shekhinah will carry exactly your present. Yes. I want to be by the Bina. I want to be attached to the Yud Gimel Midas Derachmim. So the Dinim stop. Yes, there is a way to stop all the Dinim. And it's fairly simple. It's not complicated. Because then my pipe will be on clock. And, and then I'm going to have Shefa, Bracha, Ve'atzlacha. Baruch Adino, Elohim, Amen, Ve'amen. It is my blessing to all of you. The best Hashem from now on. The Sheer Shel Yom will be stark. The, this puzzle will be stuck and, and this with a little bit of machshava, and this is where you can be. Now, if you want to pronounce saying you want to unclog that pipe, it's in your hands. No one prevents you. You want to be close to the Margolis? It's very good. Then be close to the Margolis. How? Me, I do not look, I do never think by the logic of this world. The logic of this world are the seven meters, and it seems very logical. But it's totally illogical compared to the upper world. The upper world is Aim Habanim, is the one, is the mother that gave birth to the seven meters. And, 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 and this mother has all the wiseness and the proof is all the frontier explodes. There's no more frontier that stays. So when I'm telling you that's the only way, even when you want to think in life, first, connect to the Bina. Okay, Remember, Bina is wiseness also. So you connect to the Bina. 
once you connect to the Bina, you are able, because if you want to go with the logic of this world and be confronted by the problems, yes, okay, I have a credit, I have a great idea. Great, put it on the credit uh, side. But on the other hand, what else do you have on the debit side? Maybe the debit side is bigger than even with that credit. So don't only focus on the credit. The only way to overcome hurdles, to overcome unknown situation, there's no other way in this world than spheres or Oimer. Connect yourself to the Bina. And then the hurdles, you won't even have to push them down. They will disappear. And that's what we learn. And, and the you know what? I'm going to give you a last, last proof because I have to. We learned it in Pasha's Vayakhel. He says, Remember, Lifne Hashem here. Why shouldn't I give it to you? This 196, this number, you should know it by heart. It's Yad time Yad. And I would be happy if someone can take it from here. Yad time Yad. Yad Chazaka. You remember on Pesach? We held the matzah on the left hand, which is the Gvura. We came with the right hand exactly like HaKadosh Baruch Hu did and slammed the matzah. We did Chasach. We opened up. Once we opened up, automatically the panasa comes through there. The solution comes through the opening. When you have your chalas on Shabbos, and we had this year, the panasa of the whole week come through the chala of Shabbos. When did I request that we should have the chala on Shabbos? Before Shabbos enter. It should be on the table. Because as soon as Shabbos comes, it has the bracha with it. It should deposit it into the chalas that are on the table. Because if he does not find the chalas, he may not come back around. And when you cut it, the machshava is adu chasach, adu my panasa. This is the name of the, the name of panasa equals yamsuf. You remember all the dinim? The yamsuf of the dinim, it didn't want to open the ocean because it has a lot of dinim. This is the yamsuf. So the heinif, you connect yourself and all the dinim are gone. That's finished. Amen. Um, Amen. Um, Rabbi Friedman. Hashem, I have to run to my rib, so 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 I'll I'll talk to you. Um, okay. Questions. I'll finish afterward. Hashem, okay. I just have to go to my rib. Take care. Rabbi